Hello. In this video, I'm going to go through and explain a process that will help you with an IB Type 2 portfolio. Obviously, I can't use the data from the portfolio, so I'm just going to assume that I have data from a, a bouncing ball. So this is the time and the height of a ball. I'm going to be use, showing you how to get some points in technology and uh, also in analytic math because it's very important that you are thinking about um, the context of what's happening here. So let's consider time and the height of a ball. I've got my data in Excel. I can highlight that data, go to charts. I'm using Excel version 11, but in, in on a Mac, but these uh, features will be wherever. Create a scatter plot, and it automatically generates the title for me. A couple of things that is missing are the labels, but by double clicking, you can create your scale, maximum, major, minor, minimum, uh, the ticks, the number, text box, and changing your labels to your vertical and your horizontal simply by double clicking. So you can see that the height of the ball hits the ground and then bounces again. There are two distinct pieces here. So we need a piecewise function. One of the things that Excel is not very good at is, although you can label the axes and so on, it's not good at fitting a function to it. So you can take this graph once you've labeled the axes and you can paste it into Word. So let's say our project is called height of a ball. Then, oops. You could take the height of the ball, copy it, put it into Word, and make sure that you've got the labels, the axes labeled, because that helps with your criteria B. Obviously, you need an introduction, but I'm not here to go through those kind of details. Just going to focus on the software at the moment. So that's a nice starting point. Then you want to comment with some math. So this looks like two parabolas. Okay. As I said, the height of the ball won't connect nicely with the function. So I'm going to take this data. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to go over to Autograph. In Autograph, I can click on Enter XY Dataset and paste the data in there. It generated the headings for me as well as I copied those over. I press OK and Autograph will rescale and show me my function. Okay, So you can see it looks pretty much parabolic in both instances. Um, let's try fitting a function. Entering equation, we will go y equals and y intercept looks like the vertex is at 10 so we've got a plus 10 and it's a ball so probably something like gravity is affecting it and like so and this looks pretty close I can maybe get a little bit closer here by moving the function down. Then I double click on this and it ends at about one. So I want to start up options and I want to change that to manual. I'm going to start at one, zero, and end at one. Okay. Next, I need to work on this piece. Well, this piece has an x-intercept at 1 and at 2 and a vertex at 1.5. So let's have a look here. I'm going to go for factored form, minus 9.81 because of gravity, and then x minus 1 and x minus 2. And let's see how that does. 
again, as you're going through this portfolio, it's very important that the steps that I verbally said that you are writing about in your Word document. Okay, so again, looks pretty close. Couple points below, maybe we can do a, a slight shift there, but let's take these two equations for now and have a think of how we can do some more analysis on it. So you could then talk about, I think that one will be because, and lots and lots and lots of mathematical explanation here. Okay, and then you can put these in using correct mathematical notation, of course, otherwise you're losing criteria A if that power of two is not is with a little hat then then you're gonna have some problems okay so th there you then can have a look at copying this and pasting it in here okay again it comments are very important. Okay. As you're looking at the uh, the two functions, we want to get more mathematical with it. As mathematically precise as we we can. So Looking again at my two equations, and now I'm going to use Excel a little bit here just so I can think about that. Okay, in the beginning, we define this function from 0 to 1. So the function is minus 9.81 times x. Oops. x squared plus 10. Now x is time. So we need to reference the cell. And then this is defined from here to here. Okay? So you can see these values are pretty close. Then I equal minus 9.81 times x minus 1 times x minus 2 and again I shouldn't be using x I should be actually using the cell that varies okay and then Excel can take those values like this Again, it looked pretty close. However, that's not good enough for an IB math portfolio. We want to be talking about just how close we are. So we have a look. Excel is pretty powerful, so we can make it calculate the difference between these two columns. Now, the problem is your points above and your points below, right? Here a point is a little above and here a point is a little bit below. If you just take the difference between them, it'll look like if this point was equally above that point that we would be perfect. So we have to do something a little bit different. We have to first take the absolute value of the difference between the two functions. Okay, so we start out pretty good and then as we come together, now we can find the sum of that whole column. Okay, so pretty good. But maybe we can make some improvements. So then, let's have a look at this function. It looks like I could move it maybe down slightly. So I would talk about this. Copy that 
that in. Some comments on accuracy. Then uh, mathem analytic modification explanation really really lots and lots of mathematical talk about the transformations of functions really show that you understand what you're doing okay then you make the transformation so after you've talked about what you're going to do i'm going to take this and i'm just going to make it a little bit steeper Keep my y intercept the same. And here, same thing, gonna make it a little bit steeper. I don't need to change both of the pieces. If you're totally happy with one of your pieces, that's also okay. And then you can see it came a little bit closer. Not much of a difference by eye, so we better go back to Excel and see if we made it any changes so absolute difference function what you think is your improved function so function 2 and then that was -9.9 .9. times x squared plus 10. Same thing, this is going to go for the first second. And then Plus minus 9.9 x keep making that mistake x should be 1.1 1 .1. and then here again Okay, so let's compare how this one does against this one. So we think we improved it, explained our mathematical process. Now let's see if we have improved. So always justifying, always, 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 always. All right, so absolute value of the difference between the height of the ball and our new function. And again, we need to sum up all those differences. Get my syntax right. And voila, I was got a little bit closer, so I got an improved function. So again, in my Word document, analytic modification examples, then you would want talking about how you improved it, then you would show how you think it's improved by I. It looks better, but we need some math justification. Okay, and that's where you pulled together your explanation of what you're doing. Take the differences. Mm -hmm.
and we can see improvement because the absolute differences are less than in our original function. I know that's kind of quick, that's a lot of stuff to, to process, but the main thing I'm trying to get across is different tools do different things well. Scatter graphs can be done in Excel as well as calculations. In terms of the graphing, you want to use something like Autograph, Logger Pro, Geometry Sketchpad, GeoGebra, any of those um, will will do what um, the graphing aspect to it. Then you want to define your function using math type and making sure that you are not using the little hat symbol or the star once you have it in the portfolio piece. Screenshots along the way really show the mathematical explanation of your improving of your functions with the knowledge of transformations and then show how you know that your transformations led to improvement or maybe they didn't. All right, so I hope that this helps and uh, I hope it was not too, too fast.